What is your name, Autobot? Why? Who wants to know? Smokescreen starts off as an eager young Autobot recruit who doesn't really know what he's gotten himself into. When he arrives to Earth, he is so confident that he basically expects the war to end just because he is part of the team now. He thinks every mission he is on will be successful, and he treats battles more like games because he doesn't yet have a sense of danger. So for Optimus' small team of war-experienced soldiers, Smokescreen tries their patience. Fortunately, the show allows Smokescreen to grow up, and when I say grow up, it's not like the awkward robot puberty of Cheetor and Beast Wars. It's all about Smokescreen's maturity. In Season 2, Smokescreen appears in the episode New Recruit. Autobots and Decepticons arrive on scene to investigate a Cybertronian pod. No one is sure whose side the mystery bot will be on. The Autobots arrive first and see it's a Decepticon pod, and that's when Vehicons and Insecticons start attacking. Smokescreen rushes up behind Bumblebee and RC, shooting over their heads and making them think for a moment he's attacking them. A theme of this episode is that Smokescreen is suspicious. The viewer wonders if Smokescreen is a genuine hotshot or if it is an act and he's a clever Decepticon spy. While the eager young hotshot is all legit, you first see his personality when he throws himself into the fight like some kind of hero. Smokescreen accidentally shoots explosive energon and whoops after the explosion defeats the Decepticons. He then, like many teenagers would do, tries to claim that he totally planned that. Torching that Energon leak. Pretty good plan, right? Except that it wasn't your plan. It was a random shot that almost fried us to a crisp. Worked out, didn't it? RC calls him out, but Smokescreen's enthusiasm is still not dampened. When Smokescreen sees Optimus, he gushes like a kid in front of his hero. No one is sure if he is trustworthy, so the Autobots question his backstory. Smokescreen explains that he is an elite guard graduate, but didn't get to see any action. Instead, Smokescreen was cooped up in a library guarding an old bot. Alpha Trion, so he's more excited than ever to throw himself into the action. Optimus trusts Smokescreen when the new bot shares a secret that Alpha Trion would only tell someone he trusted. The rest of Team Prime isn't convinced yet, and in the base, they question why Smokescreen arrived on Earth in a Decepticon escape pod. Smokescreen says that Decepticons attacked the Icon Hall of Records. He was so geared up the fight that everything went black and he was taken prisoner by the Decepticons. Smokescreen managed to escape the prison ship in a long-distance pod, which knocked him out until he reached Earth. A notable line is that Smokescreen wants to fight to prove himself. I was the only thing left to hold him back. And let me tell you, I was pumped. I mean, this was my chance to see real action for the first time. To prove myself. So like with most youth, Smokescreen wants to impress others. But Smokescreen assumes he is capable of anything. He thinks glory is coming, that he is destined for great things, and that with his arrival, the war is going to end. Not exactly the glory I envisioned for myself. Until now. Being here with Optimus Prime? I knew I was destined for great things. I mean, now that you have help, how hard could it be to end this war? Congrats, Smokescreen. You angered Bulkhead. The severely injured bot drags himself in to show Smokescreen how bad war can be. Diffusing the situation, Optimus suggests a tour of the base for Smokescreen. Smokescreen stares too long at their relics, and the dark drop in the tone of music makes the viewer suspect that he may still be evil. Meanwhile, Bulkhead growls his concerns that Smokescreen might replace him on the team. Optimus says that is not the case, but Bulkhead is still upset about Smokescreen's arrogance. The Autobots find Red Energon on Earth and don't let Smokescreen come on the mission no matter how excited he is. They claim he needs more training in an Earth vehicle mode. The team faces Starscream in impenetrable armor while Smokescreen looks for a new alt mode. Smokescreen hears about their difficulties fighting Starscream and begs to be put out there. Smokescreen suspiciously goes to take the face shifter because this episode is full of drama. But what he really does is use the relic that lets you slip through solid objects to kick Starscream out of his invincible armor. Because of his success, Smokescreen's arrogance is as high as ever. The dude is also now a sports car with numbers on his doors, which is not a very good for disguise. Smokescreen saves Bulkhead from Silas in episode 19, but in 20, Smokescreen annoys his team some more. He speeds on the road and blows his cover to mess with a human. He pranks more humans with Jack. 
but then Smokescreen brings Jack onto a dangerous battlefield that really makes the team, including Optimus, upset with Smokescreen. Smokescreen displays a lot of traits which teenagers have. Firstly, Smokescreen is very focused on himself and how to look cool to impress others. He thinks he is more capable than the bots who have more experience than him, and that if he were on missions instead, they would go right. He fends others with his words without being aware of it because his lack of maturity does not let him see the bigger picture or understand the emotions of others. Smokescreen is a jokester who has fun in battle and pulls pranks with Jack on Vince. Smokescreen doesn't think about the actions of others, such as why Megatron isn't pulling a sword from a rock. Smokescreen runs in to do it himself and just fails as well. He does this even after Jack tried to warn him, showing that this teenager has more maturity than the Cybertronian. Wait, something isn't right. Why doesn't Megatron just take the Star Saber? Germaphobe? Seriously, we need to wait for backup. You heard Ratchet. Backup's not available right now. Smokescreen doesn't have a good sense of consequences or fear because he just acts smug when Megatron approaches him. But Smokescreen starts to see the wrong in some of his actions. It doesn't mean he stops them right away, but he can see his mistakes afterward. Smokescreen apologizes when he sees how he endangered Jack and angered the team. He also does not want Jack to take any blame. Smokescreen sounds sincere in saying sorry, and he even feels like they should kick him off the team. RC, I was wrong. And I'm sorry. Again. And if you need to kick me off Team Prime... Disregard for human safety, or anyone's safety, will not be tolerated. Do you understand? Fully, sir. It takes time for Smokescreen to become more humble, but he does. In episode 21, Optimus gets a message from Alpha Trion, and Smokescreen thinks about himself instead of what important message Optimus may have actually gotten. Later, Smokescreen thinks he and RC can take Megatron. No. Two against one. We can take him. At the start of episode 22, Smokescreen explains that it's his destiny to become a great warrior. He's so excited for another mission that before being selected, he warms up in front of the ground bridge. He's disappointed when Optimus chooses Bumblebee and RC for the mission instead. However, Bumblebee and RC fail and return to injured to the base. Smokescreen ends up seriously offending RC by whining how everything would have gone well if he had just been there. Bulkhead tries to tell Smokescreen that RC and Bumblebee are capable warriors, and Optimus is fine without the mighty Star Saber. And he tries to point out that Smokescreen is ignorant because he just dropped into this war. The point flies over Smokescreen's head, and he thinks Bulkhead agrees with him that he needs more field experience. The next mission, Smokescreen and Bulkhead are sent out. RC tells Bulkhead to keep an eye on Smokescreen, who is bouncing around in excitement. Smokescreen finds the relic as Bulkhead fights Dreadwing, thinking that he's destined to be successful. That's when Starscream knocks him out from behind and crushes his dreams. Finally, Smokescreen faces failure and is sad because he told Optimus he wouldn't fail. Bulkhead tries to make Smokescreen feel better by saying it could have happened to anyone, but Smokescreen thinks the failure defines him as a warrior. RC is annoyed again because everyone succeeds and fails, and Smokescreen is way too focused on himself and his destiny. Smokescreen is pretty disheartened, so Optimus tries to stop RC's lecture there. She keeps going, telling Smokescreen to put the team first and to stop trying to be a hero. Smokescreen is overwhelmed by everyone staring at him, especially Optimus, as RC lectures him. Unfortunately, this is when the Autobots and Decepticons figure out there is a relic inside Smokescreen. The Decepticons easily kidnap Smokescreen, and the next episode has the Decepticons yanking the key out from his body. They also look for information inside his head. When Knockout is left alone with Smokescreen, Smokescreen activates the phase shifter and slips away, leaving Knockout in an embarrassing situation. Smokescreen steals every Omega key on the warship, even one out of Megatron's hand. He jumps off the ship, though he can't fly, and survives because of the phase shifter. It also stroked his ego to have Alpha try and pick him to hide such an important relic. Smokescreen only has supporting roles as Season 2 reaches his finale. He is part of Autobot attacks and he confidently runs around with the phase shifter, taking out Vehicons and activating a soul-sucking nuke on them. When the Autobot base goes down, Optimus sends each Autobot through the ground bridge to a random location. Season 3 reveals that Smokescreen went back against orders because he didn't want to leave Optimus alone to face Decepticons. 
With the phase shifter, Smokescreen sneaks around, pulls Optimus' injured body to a safe underground cave, and takes care of him. Smokescreen is full of hope, a good thing because with his youthful enthusiasm and love for his hero Optimus, Smokescreen refuses to let Optimus die. Optimus is dying and doesn't want Smokescreen's help, but Smokescreen tries anyway. Optimus claims that there needs to be a new Prime, and that Smokescreen could be that Prime. This key moment is when Smokescreen really develops as a character. It is when Smokescreen is faced with the question, am I really that good? And he knows the answer is no. He knows he cannot compare to Optimus Prime. Smokescreen can see that he is too young and does not have the experience. Smokescreen rejects becoming a Prime and saves Optimus by giving him the Forge of Souls Prime to repair himself. The chance to make Smokescreen, a young hotshot into the next Prime, was a tease based on how Hot Rod became Rodimus Prime in the original series. Some people are disappointed that it didn't happen. They wanted Smokescreen to become a Prime and to have a show finally let Optimus die for real. However, Smokescreen instead gets a chance to learn humility. The time for a new leader is upon us. I believe that leader stands before me right now. I can't do this. I mean, sure, who wouldn't want to be a Prime? But I'm really not ready for that kind of responsibility. Now, Smokescreen mostly takes part in the action of the accelerating plots. The Smokescreen and Optimus situation actually dragged on for the first four episodes of Season 3. Smokescreen changes his colors in Episode 5, and he is bummed out that he's still treated like a rookie when he could have been a Prime. I was nearly a Prime, but somehow I'm still a rookie. What was that about a prime? Uh, no, time. Time to stop acting like a rookie. Smokescreen also has some time with Bumblebee, asking him if he would ever want to be a prime. Bumblebee says he just wants to be a warrior, and Smokescreen agrees. Smokescreen asks why Bumblebee is still a scout and not a warrior. Bumblebee is very patiently waiting for the ceremony on Cybertron, and Smokescreen humbly claims that he should learn to be as patient as Bumblebee. Guess it would be more meaningful to graduate back home, on Cybertron. You're one patient guy. I should take a cue. It was interesting to put Bumblebee and Smokescreen together because originally, the young Autobot of the show was Bumblebee. Although Bumblebee never came across as arrogant and he never acted like he was better than the rest of the team. He was cute and energetic, with a pure innocent feel. Putting Bumblebee and Smokescreen side by side is showing that Bumblebee is the most grown up of the two. Smokescreen has not completely changed personality, he's still energetic and a jokester, but he definitely has stopped offending his own team and thinking he's better than everyone else. He's absorbed into the team and is just fighting alongside them in many scenes. Smokescreen and Ultra Magnus fight Predacons in the final movie, but Smokescreen is focused and better understands the danger. He drops one quippy line, but Smokescreen is not smiling and whooping and jumping around like before. He just got royally beat by a Predacon, so he knows how strong they are. And when Smokescreen sees Ultra Magnus in trouble, Smokescreen rushes in to save his life. After the battle, Smokescreen is grim because he recognizes how severe Ultra Magnus' wounds are. Smokescreen does not focus on looking cool anymore. He simply wants to do what is necessary, like take down the Predacons. He makes a small joke in a serious situation, but not really to make anyone laugh. And he quickly drops it and focuses on solving the current problem. What have we come home to? What are we supposed to call him, huh? Megacron? Unitron? Really? That's your biggest issue right now. <sighs> right, right. Alright, so what's the game plan? The final moment of Smokescreen's character development in the show is when he reveals that he turned down the chance to be a Prime to Bumblebee. First, Smokescreen compliments Bumblebee for seeing potential allies in the Predacons. Then, Smokescreen tells the secret, but adds calmly that... Yeah, I said it. But right place, right time doesn't mean right bot. I know that now. So this is how the teenage Autobot grew up, losing his arrogance and need to impress, to focus on working with his team. Getting what needs to be done, done, matters most. He doesn't need Destiny or to be praised as a great warrior anymore. Smokescreen is an honest and good character because he was offered incredible power and he turned it down because he recognized that he wasn't worthy of it. He knows he has more growing to do 
and he's carefully watching bots like Bumblebee now for inspiration. Lord Smokescreen, Emperor of Destruction. How can you sit there? That's some bad mojo. 